There is this idea that's been sitting on my to-do list for months now but I kept putting it off. This website I'm talking about won award site of the day in October 2024. It had some really cool scroll animations. The sliding cards caught my attention but what really stood out was this dynamic triangle geometry with its fill animation synced perfectly with the scroll. To be honest, the sliding cards were straightforward to recreate but that geometry looked like one of the most complicated concepts I would have to deal with, which is why I kept avoiding it. But last week, I finally decided it was time to tackle this. After about 10 hours of work, I managed to recreate a decent version of that scroll effect. Combining the geometry animation with the sliding cards using JavaScript canvas, GSAP and scroll trigger. This is easily one of the most time-intensive mini-projects I've ever built on this channel. So I would truly appreciate if you drop a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already, as it helps more people discover my work and supports the growth of the channel. And if you'd like to access the source code for this and hundreds of other similar projects, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. Let's start by building the structure of the page. We'll create a container with three sections, the hero section, the sticky section and the outro section. In the hero and outro sections, I'll add some placeholder titles using h1 tags. This is just to make sure the page doesn't look empty and gives us a sense of the structure. Inside the sticky section, we'll start with a background image to set the tone. Next, we'll add two canvas layers. The first one called the outline layer will be used to render the triangle edges. The second one called the fill layer will be used to render the triangle shapes filled with an orange color. We are placing these canvas layers on separate levels so that we can add sliding cards in the middle layer just like the original website. Now let's create the cards. Each card will be divided into two parts, the card image and the card title. The card image will simply hold an image while the card title will have an h1 and a paragraph. Finally, I'll duplicate this card two more times and replace the placeholder content. And that wraps up the HTML. Let's move on to the CSS next. First, we'll reset the default margins and padding to 0 for all elements and set the box sizing to border box. Next, we'll style the HTML and body to take up the full width and height of the viewport. To allow for extended scrolling, we'll set the height to 800% of the viewport height. I'll also define a custom font. Images will be styled to fit perfectly within their containers by setting their width and height to 100% and ensuring they maintain their aspect ratio. For the headings, I'll apply some bold styling. All H1 elements will be uppercase with a custom font called FK Screamer. It will have a large size to make the text pop. Any H1 that contains span will have its text styled in a bright orange color to stand out. Paragraphs will have a clean and simple look with a medium font weight and a slightly smaller font size to balance the design. Each section will fill the full width and height of the viewport. The position will be set to relative and any overflow will be hidden to keep everything tidy within the section boundaries. For the hero and outro sections, I'll use a black background with a white text to create a high contrast effect. The content will be perfectly centered using flexbox and the headings inside these sections will have even a larger font size. The background image in the sticky section will be set to cover the entire area, positioned absolutely at the top left corner of the section. Now for the canvas layers, both canvases will stretch beyond the viewport, covering 150% of the width and height to ensure smooth animations. The outline layer will sit behind everything, while the fill layer will be placed above the sliding cards.
Speaking of the cards, they will be laid out horizontally using flexbox. The card container will span 3 times the width of the viewport to allow for the scroll animations. Each card will have a black background, take up 10% of the viewport's width and stretch to 75% of its height. The cards are positioned between the canvas layers for a dynamic layered effect. The card image will fill its space while the title will include an H1 for the name and a paragraph for additional details. Lastly, I'll also paste some styles directly from the Linux documentation. These are important because we'll be adding smooth scroll functionality later in JavaScript. Finally, for responsiveness, the card width will increase to 25% on smaller screens to ensure it looks great on all devices. And that's it for the CSS. Let's move on to JavaScript next. Let me start by explaining the overall logic. To create the animation, we'll use JavaScript canvas to draw the geometry dynamically. When the page loads, we'll generate a grid of triangles and assign each triangle a specific state such as its scale and visibility. We'll also assign an order to these triangles to control how they animate in sequence during the scroll. As the user scrolls, we'll track the progress and smoothly transition each triangle state going from an outline to a fully filled triangle. This ensures a smooth animation that feels responsive to the scroll. The triangle states are stored and updated dynamically, allowing us to effectively redraw the canvas as needed. The combination of canvas and GSAP gives us full control over the visuals and the timing of the animations. Also, I'm not great with canvas math required to draw those perfect triangles, so I got some help from ChatGPT to write the logic for rendering them using vanilla JavaScript, just to save me a lot of time and headaches. Let's break this down block by block. First, we'll wait for the DOM to fully load. Then, we register GSAP's scroll trigger plugin to handle scroll related animations. We'll also initialize Lanis, a smooth scroll library, and link it to scroll trigger to ensure all animations are in sync with the scrolling behavior. Next, we'll grab references to key DOM elements like the sticky section and the two canvas layers. We'll also define their contexts to draw on them. First, we grab the rendering context for each canvas layer using the getContext method. This gives us a 2D drawing context which we'll use to draw the triangles. Next, we need to ensure the canvas looks sharp across all devices including high resolution displays. To do this, I've created a utility function called setCanvasSize. Inside this function, we calculate the device's pixel ratio using window.devicePixelRatio. Then, we multiply the canvas dimensions by this ratio to make sure everything is rendered crisply. We also scale the drawing context to match this ratio and finally, we set the canvas style properties to match the screen dimensions. Once this function is defined, we call it for both the outline and fill canvas layers to initialize their sizes. With the canvas setup, let's define a few constants and variables. The triangle size is set to 150, which determines the base size of each triangle on the grid. The line width for the outlines is set to 1. We'll use a map to store the state of each triangle, which will include its position, scale, and animation progress. Other variables like animation frame ID will help us manage the animation loop and canvas X position will track the horizontal position or movement of the canvas during the scroll. Now let's move on to the draw triangle function. This function is responsible for rendering the triangles on the canvas. It takes several parameters, the drawing context, the X and Y position, the fill scale and whether the triangle is flipped vertically. First, we calculate the half size of the triangle for positioning. If the fill scale is below the threshold, the function only draws the triangle outline. Using begin path, we define the vertices of the triangle based on whether it's flipped or not.
and then we stroke the outline using a subtle color and line width. If the fill scale is above the threshold, the triangle is drawn as a filled shape. To achieve this, we save the current canvas state, apply transformations like scaling and translation for the fill animation and then define the same triangle shape as before. Finally, we set the fill and stroke styles and render the fill triangle. Once the triangle is drawn, we restore the canvas state to avoid affecting other drawings. This function ensures that each triangle is rendered and animated correctly based on its state. Next, let's move on to setting up the grid of triangles and animating them as we scroll. We'll move on to the draw grid function, which handles drawing and updating the triangles on the canvas as we scroll. This function takes a scroll progress parameter which is a value between 0 and 1, representing the current scroll position relative to the animation. The first thing we do inside the function is check if there is an ongoing animation frame. If there is, we cancel it using cancel animation frame to prevent overlapping animations. Next, we clear the entire canvas for both the outline and fill layers. This ensures we are starting with a clean slate before drawing the updated state of the triangles. We then calculate the animation progress. This value determines how far along the animation should be based on the scroll progress. If the scroll progress is less than or equal to 0.65, the animation doesn't start yet and the animation progress is set to zero. Once the scroll exceeds 0.65, the triangles begin to animate and their progress is calculated proportionally. We initialize a needs update flag as false. This will help us decide whether we need to request a new animation frame. Now let's move on to the first loop over the triangle state. In this loop, we iterate over all triangles to draw their outlines. If a triangle scale is less than 1, we calculate its position based on its row and column in the grid. The horizontal position also accounts for the canvas scrolling offset using canvas X position. We determine whether the triangle should be flipped vertically based on the sum of its row and column indices. Finally, we call the draw triangle function to render the outline of the triangle. Next, we enter a second loop to handle the scaling and filling of the triangles. For each triangle, we first determine if it should be visible based on its assigned animation order and the current animation progress. If the triangle should be visible, its target scale is set to 1, otherwise it's set to 0. We then calculate the new scale for the triangle using a smooth transition formula. The animation speed constant controls how quickly the triangles scale up or down. If the new scale is different enough from the current scale, we update the triangle's state and set the needs update lag to true. If the triangle scale meets the visibility threshold, we calculate its position and call the draw triangle function to render it as a filled shape. After both loops, we check the needs update flag. If it's true, we request a new animation frame to keep the update running smoothly until all triangles reach their target states. This function ensures that the grid of triangles animates dynamically, transitioning from outlines to filled shapes as the user scrolls. Let's now move on to initializing the triangles grid and tying this animation to the scroll. We start by defining the initialize triangle function. This function creates a grid of triangles that will be drawn and animated during the scroll. First, we calculate the number of columns and rows needed to fill the viewport. The number of columns is based on the canvas width divided by half the triangle size and the number of rows is calculated similarly using the height. The total number of triangles is the product of these rows and columns. Next, we create an array called positions to store the grid layout. Each triangle is assigned a row, a column and a unique key based on its position. This key helps us track the state of each triangle in the triangle states map. To add some randomness to the animation order, we shuffle the positions array. This is done using a simple swapping algorithm which rearranges the positions randomly. After shuffling, we loop through the positions and assign each triangle a state. The state includes an order value which determines when the triangle should be animated, its initial scale and its row and column indices. These states are then stored in the map for easy access during the animation. 
Once the triangles are initialized, we call the draw grid function to render the initial state of the canvas. Next, we add a resize event listener to ensure everything remains responsive. Whenever the window resizes, we recalculate the canvas size and clear the triangle states map, reinitialize the triangles, and redraw the grid. This ensures the animation adapts perfectly to the new viewport dimensions. Finally, we use scroll trigger to tie the animations to the scroll behavior. We create a trigger on the sticky section and define the start and end points of the animation based on the section's height. Inside the onUpdate callback, we calculate the canvas exposition based on the scroll progress, which moves the canvas horizontally. We then call the drawGrid function to update the triangles dynamically as the user scrolls. Additionally, we animate the sliding cards using GSAP. As the scroll progresses, the cards move horizontally across the viewport, creating a smooth synchronized effect with the triangles. And that wraps up the JavaScript. We have now set up a fully interactive scroll animation with dynamic canvas rendering and GSAP driven card animations. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.